Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Beautiful Monday morning. Let's now get straight into the uh, newspapers and see what major stories have uh, or are making the headlines uh, this morning. And right after that, we'll be introducing our guest. I'm starting with the Nigerian Tribune uh, this morning and uh, we'll get to share some of the stories. It's going to be on your screen in just a few seconds. Um, yes, that's it. All right, it says here, Tinubu, Bajabia Amila, APC Southwest leaders and governors oppose secession. Secession, not solution. 1999 constitution is the problem, says Adibanjo. And also how fuel price increase will worsen poverty situation. Or your local government poll, PDP clears 32 local government areas. Inauguration holds today. We can also see here stocks and bonds uh, Naira head south. The PDP may have lost $50 million to delayed uh, pilotage uh, tender uh, process. Um, sorry, the federal government, not PDP. The federal government may have lost $50 million. Also on the um, Nigerian Tribune this morning, NDLEA intercepts 8 billion Naira worth of cocaine, arrest corporate at Lagos Airport. Uh, seizes $24,500 offered as bribe to compromise investigation. 72 injured in Kano petrol tanker explosion. We can also see here reps member from Oyo Petitions Presidency demands compensation for kidnapped victims in Ibarapa. President Buhari calls wife of late Chief of Army Staff. Says here nation will never forget supreme sacrifice of Atahiru and others. And also national flag to fly at half mast. Let's sit down and talk, Mieti Alatel's Southern Kaduna Union. And the last uh, one here says, treat military plane crashes as national emergency. And that is from Khan to President Buhari. On the Punch newspaper, Chief of Army Staff, 10 others, death. Air Force to decide on military jets after probe. NAF says, we won't rush to take decisions that will hamper our operations. Nigerian Air Force plane crashes claim 33 officers, 11 aircraft in six years. Above the headline on the Punch newspaper, National Assembly to bar NPA, NCC, Nemasa from spending revenue. GDP grows by 0.51% in the first quarter of the year. Economy still weak. Experts lament. Baron caught with... 8 billion naira cocaine in Lagos offers $24,500 bribe. Malami and Mephili others appear before reps today over looted assets probe. On the Punch newspaper, Bello begins Southwest youth mobilization ahead of presidential bid. Saudi Arabia issues 60,000 person limit, age restriction for Hajj. Also on the Punch newspaper, below the headline, we see a story here saying, Fire me, Akira Dolu absent, as Southwest leaders endorse ranching state police. PDP wins all your local government elections. Amoteku confronts armed men protesting or shun killed suspected, sus suspected cultist. Naked cops of ex U Uni Abuja female students removed from drain. That's sad. Taskwed official, FUNAP students, two others abducted, 150 million naira demanded. How we foiled attempted kidnap, robbery by herdsmen along Akure Elisha Highway, and that's according to the police. And lastly, on the Punch newspaper, Lagos, Lagos motorists driving against traffic risk imprisonment vehicle for future. Those are the ones on the Punch newspaper. All right, now to the Guardian newspapers this morning. Military plane crashes, civil mishaps raise safety concerns. Um, we can also see here, Southwest APC supports Southern Governor's ban on open grazing, converses true federalism and more power and resources to states. We can also see here, Tinubu denies endorsing any candidate for Lagos Council elections. ICT policy, missteps, lingering challenges weaken GDP growth. And also troops foil mass kidnap in Kaduna, rescue hostages. Uh, I think those are the ones. Okay, we can also find here. World Igbo Congress denounces declared war on Southeast. And federal government declares uh, 90, I believe, travelers from India, Brazil, Turkey, wanted for evading quarantine. 
Those are the stories we can find on The Guardian this morning. Lastly, on the Daily Trust newspaper, four policemen, 44 others killed in gunmen attacks. On the Daily Trust, it also reads, Tinubu governors, other Southwest leaders reject cessation. Still on the Daily Trust newspaper, only 60,000 pilgrims will perform 2021 Hajj in Saudi Arabia. Also, Northern Elders kick as Ondo introduces Odua anthem in schools. 64 injured in Kano tank explosion. Buhari orders flag to fly at half mast to honor Atahiru, 10 others. Also, intense lobby as Buhari shops for new army chief. Wow. Ali Kefi, Ahan Nutsu, Saham, others touted, and jettison ethnicity expert tells presidents. Those are the stories we're taking this morning on Off the Press. Good morning, Mr. Tunde Kolawale. Good morning, my sister. The biggest story. A lovely weekend. Oh, yes, fantastic. Thank you. The biggest story we've seen on our papers today is the, uh, the very sad incident of the plane crash that claimed the lives of 10 officers, you know, and our Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Ibrahim Matihiru, and the controversy surrounding the President's, you know, absence and his Vice President as well, with this, a 44-48 hour security protocol, you know, thrown in between. Um, how do you come in? Well, uh, let me say uh, straight away that um, the crash that led to the death of the uh, chief of army staff and of those uh, army officers is a tragedy of monumental proportion. It's not what anyone will wish for even his worst enemy. Look at the chief of army staff. He is just about 54 years old. That's a young man, in my humble opinion, who ordinarily still has so many, many years ahead of him to render services to his fatherland. Also look at, look at the pilot, the man who flew the aircraft. His father said he's the only son that he has and about the brightest, uh, one of the brightest in the family. You can also say that for most of the other army officers who lost their lives in this unfortunate plane crash. So I condole with the families of these people. I condole with the Nigerian army. And I also condole with uh, the Nigerian people. Uh, the death of just any in one individual is a blemish on all of us. But with that as it may, just like Khan and Adenia Jew has drawn our attention to, we require to focus attention on the state of our aircraft, the capability of our pilots, and the ability to fly this plane, and also the weather reading uh, gadgets that we do have uh, all over the country. When we are told that uh, the weather is partly responsible for that crash, if we had an effective weather reading uh, gadget in the different air, uh, by airports and all, all over the country, it will, it will probably have been predicted that it was not safe to fly to Kaduna at that period in time because of the weather situation. And remember, there was a time in this country that contracts were awarded for gadgets with, uh, to, to predict effect, I mean, weather effectively, and also to do total radar coverage of the entire country. So that if there is any, air, any plane that intrudes into our airspace. Mr. Kalawale. There are probably people who will be able to pick it. Mr. Kalawale, yes. uh, qu quickly, yes. quickly, the, the um, main, um, you know, conversation, you know, this morning is, you know, the president, of course, asking that flags be flown at half-mast and, of course, uh, calling the wife, uh, the wife, rather, of the uh, later uh, chief of army staff it, 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 without being able to attend the burial ceremony of uh, these uh, soldiers. And, of course, same with the vice president. So... Um, do you think that, you know, there is some reason why the president may not have been able to attend and it's not, a, it's not such a big issue because that's where the major controversy has been over the weekend? 
Well, uh, there could be, but uh, it's difficult to read their mind in the sense that uh, first and foremost, we are told, we all know there is a, the COVID pandemic outside. That has not uh, totally gone away. It's not impossible, but the vice president and the president are trying to stay away from a very large crowd. That is all. Secondly, you and I knew that the president is an old man. He just returned from France, where he had a grueling session on now the African economy can be revitalized. That may have taken a toll on him. I was also reading the paper that the vice president was cited at the sitting hospital here in Lagos. We don't know whether he went in there to greet somebody or for treatment. That is another angle to it. Uh, thirdly, when you look at uh, the president and the vice president, uh, they hardly go on condolence visits in most of the things that have been happening in the country uh, in the recent times. In a place like France, for example, one person was killed in Nice, and the president had to leave Paris to go and condole with the family. We haven't been seeing that kind of a thing around here. So this may be our conjectures. And of course, it is obvious that uh, these two people may not be enjoying the best of us. It could also be that uh, they have not placed much priority on the crash that happened. For a soldier like the president himself, it's just one of those things that uh, happen in the sense that uh, if they were on the battlefield and they lost their lives and all that, generals don't engage in uh, long, serious, prolonged mourning over casualties that are uh, recorded uh, within the army. Uh, so let's Kawale. give it to them. Mr. Kalawale, yeah. I wanted to ask you, yes. you, you think, you know, there should be, there should, or the president, the way he visited France for a summit, that is more important than the life of an army general that was fighting. No, I never fighting. said so. I said the grueling session. I said the grueling session he had in there may have uh, uh, made him tired or weakened him. Okay. You and I know that the president is a very old man. And it's not a joint the repose of health now. I remember at one of the heat uh, prayer, during one of uh, the heat session after fasting, he had to sit down on the chair at the prayer ground. In the past, he would not have done that if he was in the best of uh, health. Furthermore, let me raise this issue. This is very, very important. You and I will know, throughout the era of the military rule, the military head of state never developed the Nigerian Air Force. They never equipped them. They never allowed them to go on training because they were scared that the Air Force could be used to overthrow their government, just like Jerry Rowling did in Ghana. And because of that, they paralyzed the Air Force. So the, the Air Force is just revitalized itself. It's just coming uh, back now. Um, Mr. Kola, that is why they have not been too effective in the combat operations. All right, Mr. Kolawole. In this uh, um, fight against the Bukwara. Okay, uh, let, let's uh, move to something else. Um, um, I want to believe that, you know, we have very well-trained uh, Air Force uh, pi pilots and fighters. Uh, but let's move to the Southwest now, where uh, Southwest, uh, uh, APC Southwest leaders have opposed uh, the calls for secession. If you remember over the weekend also, Tunde, uh, sorry, uh, Sunday Buho uh, led um, a rally in uh, Akure, asking, of course, uh, for... Uh, the Yoruba nation to break away from Nigeria. Um, the news this morning says the Southwest APC um, uh, leadership and uh, governors have opposed the call for secession, but of course have given a go-ahead for the ban on open grazing. Quickly also respond to that one. Well, let me quickly say that uh, I have seen different headlines in the different papers with regard to the meeting that was held in Lagos between the so-called uh, Southwest leaders and the uh, APC governor. Uh, the headline in The Guardian is different from the one in the Tribune. But let me correct an erroneous impression. People met in Lagos 
are the loyalists and supporters of Asukaju Ahmed Bola Tinobu. You can adequately describe them as Southwest leaders. Furthermore, you could see that there appears to be a crack within their rank. The governor of the Kichi State, for example, and that of those states didn't attend the meeting. For me, that is a significant. Furthermore, you talked about the rally that was held in Akure, as is the practice with him, the governor of Ondo State usually speaks from both sides of the house. He said um, he didn't attend the meeting in Lagos. He also said he doesn't support secession. And that uh, uh, the claim by Sunday Igbo that Akiri Dolu is supporting them, Akiri Dolu has denied that. He said he's not uh, supporting them and all that. But at least he allowed the rally to be held in those places. All these are minor signs that the Southwest may not be speaking with some voice in this issue. And that will be tragic. I expected the so-called uh, APC leaders in the Southwest to have put their partisan interests behind them and support the positions that the generality of their people are taking. And maybe what Sunday Igbo is doing. Why do I say this? You may, if, you, if they support him, or say, look, we support whatever direction our people are going is where we are going to go to. That will put a lot of pressure on the northern leaders and compel them to come to the negotiation table. Even though when you get to the negotiation table, you may not be asking for secession, but at least you could put some other very charming and important uh, uh, programs to restructure the country or the agenda which the Northern leaders will be compelled to either concede to you or allow you to have some of the things you have put on the table. But what they have done now, they are weakened Sunday Igbo and the other Yoruba people who are agitating for the secession of the South um, uh, uh, West. More worrisome is um, the involvement of a chief uh, Akonde in all this matter. I do know as a fact that in 1983-84, there are about, during the era of the Unity Party of Nigeria, he was the deputy governor for your state and the returning officer for the UPN uh, governorship election at the INEC uh, office at uh, Agudi. It was right in his presence that uh, Certain policemen, certain military men were brought from certain parts of the country to come and compromise the integrity of the election. Right in the presence of Chief Akande as deputy governor and returning officer for the Unity Party of Nigeria, all the results from the field were told. They tiered it. And then they wrote a fresh uh, result that brought uh, Dr. Molulu Loyo uh, to power as governor of your state. The uprising, in the protest against that blatter rigging of the election was also met with a lot of brutality. A lot of people were killed all over our young state. If a man had gone through such, um, uh, had had such an experience in the past, one would expect him to be more patriotic and precise with his people when issues are as complex and as just, damning just the same and way. as important as this. Well, just the same way. Um... Okay, loyalty is to his friends. Yeah, Mr. Uh, only serves as a messenger. Yeah, just, just the same way a lot of people would argue that um, the views of uh, Namdi Kanu and the IPOB don't necessarily represent the views of the whole of the Southeast. Um, it might be the same way, you know, that uh, Sunday Boho and his um, followers don't necessarily represent the views of the Southwest. And so when you're saying that the governors should um, take a stand with the people, um, the people may not, you know, be on the same page with Sunday Igbo, you know, he, he's having his own um, um, narrative. You know, the rest of the Southwest might have a totally different opinion, you know. So, so maybe that's where the governors, you know, have decided to stand. Um, I'm not sure. Um, no, I don't it? think so. I don't think so. When you look at what all of us are going through today, in terms of high cost of living, in terms of corruption, in terms of lights of power supply, 
in terms of dilapidated uh, infrastructure, everybody, whether in the south south, in the southeast, in the southwest, are suffering the same thing. The governors are taking this position simply because, or the governors supporting government in are taking this position simply because they are also architects of some of the iniquities or some of the things that their people are suffering. Take, for example, they are crying about true federalism. Which one of them has allowed true federalism to take place in their respective states? When local government elections are conducted, it is the party in power in the southwest, uh, the dominant party that will win all the elections. A local government election has just been held in New York State. The PDP cleared all the seats. That's to tell you that those people are not on the same page with their own people. They are totally alienated from them. Look at the high level of unemployment. Look at the high level of kidnapping. Poppers have been killed and what have you. I strongly suspect that it is because of their political interest and the ambition for 2023. That is why they are taking a divergent position from that of their people. Furthermore, like I said before, restructuring and state police is not the issue. Even we are in the Southwest, all the police um, in structures that they have themselves set up, like I'm attempting, like a last man, like Lagos neighborhood security was, which one of them have they financed properly? Which one have they allowed to function properly? Which one have they not deployed against their political opponents for their selfish interests? So whether it is the Igbo leaders or the Southwest leaders, they are all not on the same page with their people simply because of their vested political interests. Okay. And when leaders' political interests is at variance with their people, then you could expect that. What is likely to happen is that uh, those who are agitating for this decision may have to first and foremost confront the leaders at home first before they even confront those who are outside. All, All right. right, Mr. Tunikola Wale. We appreciate you every time you come on The Breakfast to analyze issues uh, with us. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you. Okay, so we'll take a break here to return and discuss key events that shaped our history. Do stay with us.